All right, uh, welcome to our uh, week one question and answer session. Um, you guys did it, you did week one. Um, I know there's been some hiccups along the way. Um, I have not done this before in a online course setting, so there's so many things I don't know <laughs> and so many things I just totally missed. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, get those bugs worked out quickly and all of your feedback and questions have been so helpful with that. Um, yeah, so let's dive right in. We've just got a couple questions this week and then we'll kind of go over the recap together and uh, yeah, kind of reflect on what we've learned. Um, so a couple questions come up. Um, so how does the HRV app work? Like, what does it do? Um, so what the Pulse app is doing uh, is it's taking information from your wearable. Um, so that's an Apple Watch Fitbit, whatever it is that you have, the amp, Amaze Band, I think is what I recommend it to some folks. Um, and it's gathering your heart rate variability data. So um, heart rate variability is different than heart rate. Um, and they're different in, in a pretty significant way. And, and the, the reason that we're using it is because of that significant way. So heart rate is just noticing um, how many beats per minute you're having. I'm sure there's more to it than that from a uh, like biological standpoint. Um, but in terms of heart rate variability, what that means is how quickly does my heart rate elevate or lower um, relative to how many beats per minute I'm having. So am I recovering? If you think from like a fitness standpoint, uh, you just did 30 burpees or whatever, and you're just gassed, right? And you look at your watch or you look whatever, heart rate skyrocketing. But then the person next to you is like not breathing super heavy. You're like, what in the world? Like, how are they pulling that off? So from a biological, physical standpoint, they have increased heart rate variability, meaning that their heart rate can go up, but then it can also come down much more quickly. So that is letting you know how your body is responding to stress. Now, stress is not just a biological, physical experience. There's also emotional turmoil and stress that we experience and our body processes it in the same way um, by elevating or decreasing our heart rate based on how well we're metabolizing or processing that stress. So when you're looking at the Pulse app and you're seeing a four, what that means is that, kind of using our burpees analogy, is you just did a bunch of burpees emotionally, uh, or maybe physically, if, if, that, if you did work out at that point in time, um, and your heart rate variability is not coming down, you're still gassed, it's been a minute, it's been two minutes, and you're still, <laughs> you're, not, you're not recovering. That's how your body is responding to stress in that moment. It might not feel that way. And so the reason that we're using this app is to start establishing, creating, and fostering that connection to our awareness of our body and the way that it's processing and handling stress. So I hope that explains why we're using um, the heart rate variability. I know I've got some content um, in the curriculum on that, but just wanted to explain it. Now, what do you do with that? Um, that's another question that I've got here. So they're kind of piggybacking on that first one. So what do you do? We've got that heart rate, or heart, heart rate variability, HRV recap at the end of each day. What the heck do I do with that? So what we're doing is we're looking just briefly over our day. We're noticing where there were some fours, where there are some ones, and just starting to notice patterns, um, starting to notice events. Maybe every day at 3 p.m., uh, your heart rate variability kind of tanks. It's not doing well. Remember, a four means that we're not processing our stress very well. A one means that we're doing a really good job of processing our stress. Um, so if we're seeing lots of fours on there and we start to notice a consistent pattern, odds are there's an event or series of events that are taking place kind of daily or weekly or whatever it is, wherever you're noticing the pattern. And we're not doing great in that category. We're not doing great whatever what that situation is. So the kind of magic that happens is as we're learning these tools to you know, cultivate our, our uh, positive mindset or this upcoming week, um, our emotional regulation, we can start to tie those tools to the events that are causing us uh, stress and stress that we're not processing super well. Um, there's probably something underlying that we need to pay attention to and these tools give us access to that. Um, hope that clarifies some things and clears some things up. Um, the recap this week, um, pretty straightforward. We're just kind of reflecting on the work that we've done um, and going over gratitude. We're going over our strengths or gift analysis. 
Uh, we're going over our best self visualization uh, and we're kind of reflecting on that act of kindness. Um, this is just to, to solidify, pay attention to kind of um, further reflect on the work that we've done, patting ourselves on the back for a job well done, and then also just bringing it top of mind. You'll notice at the end of the recap, the last page of the curriculum for this week, uh, there's the BRS, so the B Brief Resilience Survey. Am I getting that right? Survey? Scale. I knew I wasn't getting exactly right. Uh, brief Resilience Scale. So what you want to do when you go through that uh, is just in the moment. This doesn't need to be kind of meta. We don't need to think about generally how we're doing or how we're processing information what we're, or processing uh, resilience or we're acting in a resilient way. Um, what we're looking for is in the moment, how do I feel right now? Um, and, and just document that. I think it's six questions. Uh, and then write your score down at the bottom. We'll do more with that as the curriculum progresses. Anyway, um, really appreciate you guys. Really looking forward to your questions, uh, comments, feedback. Um, if you do have any lingering questions, let me know. Again, they're anonymous. Um, so if you do ask them, I'll know who it came from. But in terms of sharing in this question time, no one else will. Um, so it's pretty safe space to ask questions. And if it feels like one that needs to be handled in a more personal way, I'd be happy to do that too. Anyway, uh, rock on.